But to start with Arsenal, to start with Arsenal, another scintillating performance from them. The second half, look, people will look at the stats in the second half and say, Fulham got into the game. They had some chances. They made it difficult because Arsenal were playing in first gear. Arsenal were relaxing. It was easy. It was simple. It wasn't even a difficult game for the Gunners today. They won with consummate ease. And this is why I believe that they're going to win the league. You know, we saw yesterday City struggling, struggling to break down Crystal Palace. Arsenal today doing it with ease. A clean sheet as well. I wonder what Gary Neville's response is going to be to this one. Five points clear as they go to what? Is it 26 games they've now played? 27 games, just 11 remaining. So that now means with 11 games to go, 11 games to go, City need to win three more games. They need to win three more games in the last 11 than Arsenal. It's getting harder and harder and harder each each time. Each game that goes by where they're not closing that five-point gap, it gets more and more difficult for Man City to catch them. And when you look at the performance today from Arsenal, Trossard, what a signing he has been. And I say that because he isn't just playing well and influencing games and being dangerous. He isn't just holding on to the ball, keeping the play wide, taking, making space for others. He's delivering outputs as well. The outputs as well for Arsenal, which is what it's all about. Football is all about the output. It's all about the output. It is all about winning the game. It is not just about creating space for others or how nice on the eye things look. Legitimate, quality, quality performance uh, from Leandro Trossard today. Marking, you know, making that signing look an absolute brilliant piece of business from Arsenal. And I said at the time, maybe not in, in five or six years' time if Mihailo Mudrik reaches the pinnacle of the game. But clearly to me, in the short term, I said it when they bought him, many Gunas didn't agree, but a better signing than Mudrik in the short term. And what a performance from him. Martinelli, Odegaard and Gabriel on the score sheet. And look, by half time, it was all over. Gabriel Jesus coming on, getting 13 minutes. What a, what a game as well to be able to give Gabriel uh, his reintroduction into the Premier Gabriel Jesus, his reintroduction into the Premier League. No pressure. He, he didn't have to come into a game that's 0-0, 1-1, where he's got to perform. He gets to feel himself in again. Maybe he goes on the bench. Maybe he starts against a sporting on Thursday, but what a boost it was very late last night when Charles Watts broke the news that Trossard was available, but Gabriel Jesus was on his way back because you saw the uplift it gave the players, the feeling and the, the, the atmosphere in the stadium was electric when he came onto the football pitch. And as I stated this morning, with that news, Arsenal legitimately got scarier. That's why they're my favourites to win the league. Just on that performance today, this is what Arsenal have been, 85 90% of the season. Maybe that's even too harsh. Maybe 92 to 95% of the season today is what we've seen from Arsenal every week. That is why the occasional wobble, the occasional game where they concede first, but yet still seem to come through the adversity and win should not be a concern for anybody. The consistency and sustainability of Arsenal's performances is exactly why they are top of the league. Fulham, by the way, no mugs. It's been a very difficult place to, to go this year, Craven Cottage, and a very difficult place for teams to pick up points. Arsenal made it look absolutely easy. I know they didn't have Paulinho, but listen, everybody has players missing. Did, did Arsenal, have, Arsenal have anyone missing today? We'd say first teamer. Maybe not. But well, still, you know, but they had Jesus missing for three months and still maintained the five-point gap. One player being missing for me isn't enough to start making excuses in my humble opinion. But as, as already stated, another sensational performance um, from Arsenal. I'm going to try and star your super chats that are coming in. Some, when KJ's backstage, I think he's doing it. And then I check and he ain't. <laughs> Sometimes he does. The funniest thing with KJ is when his camera's not on. I think he's still doing it. He obviously goes off to get a drink or go to the bathroom and I've missed loads. But we'll get them all up for you in a moment. Um, a lot of people said it was an easy game for Arsenal. It was easy. But it was easy because Arsenal was so damn good. We are going to bring our panel out soon to discuss this in more detail. So please stay with us today and make sure like buttons are being hit. Make sure you're subscribing and clicking the bell notification button as well. Uh, Joshua Lovelace here says, no team has, play, uh, has two players with 10 plus goals. Arsenal has three. Trossard was different gravy today. Uh, but guess who's back? Back again. Welcome back. Jesus. Uh, Sports Capital says Mitrovic is going to be 
in Saliba's pocket until he dies. Okay, we don't, don't probably need to go that far. Talk about people dying, but um, listen, he was he was pocketed today. I don't necessarily think it was on Mitrovic either. The midfield battle is is the difference today. I've seen Fulham play really well this season. Their full backs marauding forward, the midfield dominating, either the ball or the territories. You don't always have to have the ball to be the dominant team. Don't be fooled by possession statistics all the time. But they battled that well today. They couldn't get the ball into Mitrovic. Second half, he had more of it. That's because Arsenal sat back and went, go on then, show us what you got. Uh, shameful refs in the Premier League. The level of the Eredivisie refs is way above the Premier League. How is it possible? United robbed. And we'll come on to that very, very soon indeed. Um, this here says, tactical masterclass from Arteta. Made Fulham look like a training session. Saliba back to his best. Trossard phenomenal. Uh, Barca-esque. Sorry, Barca-esque. Uh, GJ9 back looks sharp. Yeah, Trossard was phenomenal today. And I think a lot of people laughed at that signing. Panic by not getting your first choice. Listen, Trossard's quality. And everybody saw it at Brighton. And I think the most impressive part of Trossard is the fact he's doing it against teams playing low block. No one plays low block against Brighton. He's able to do it against the, the teams that sit back against you and work in those tight spaces. Top quality. Uh, Trossard fits our system like a glove. Thanks, CFC. Which is why Arsenal fans should not be crying about your manager wanting Declan Rice. Drop your agenda against him and back your manager. Arteta's main signings have nearly all been hits. Can't think of one like a prominent player that you've signed. Not a backup. Not one of the early signings, but a prominent signing who's been awful. And listen, Tavares and Sambi, they're backups. I'm talking prominent signings. So the fact that Gunas are questioning Declan Rice is more about your agenda against Rice than it is than it is thinking about uh, what you what is right for your football club and what you need. In my opinion, uh, Trossard is the best January signing this season. I think you're right, Chad. I think you're absolutely right because he's delivering in games that are leading Arsenal towards a title. And I've said it many times before that scoring goals is one thing. Creating goals is another. When you're doing it in the title race, that is creme de la creme. It's easy doing it when there's no pressure. Easier doing it at the start of the season, through the festive period, in title chart. This is why I regard the majority of the Man United legends as the best players in the Premier League, because they delivered 13 Premier League titles for adversity. Type moments. It's much harder. And young Gunners are now seeing, oh, th these goals and these title races mean more. They, they, there's more to them. It's why Ronaldo's overhead kick is the greatest goal in Premier League history. Sorry, Rooney's overhead kick. Because it was in the derby race in the middle of a title race. Between those two teams, it means more. The pressure's higher. I'm glad to see people are getting it now. I love seeing it. I love seeing that epiphany moment in people's minds. I get what he means now. Love that. Absolutely love it. Uh, the purchase of, uh, of Trossard in January is equal, uh, if not greater, than Erling Haaland to Man City. Come on, you gooners. In terms of impact, Khalid, yes. And if you win the league, it's even better because that's, all, that, that's the only thing that matters. Yes, he might have more goals, but if you don't win the league, great. You know, what would you rather win every game 5-0? All, all the games you win in the season, 5-6-0, but come second, or win every game 1-0, but win the league. Win the league. It's all that matters at the end of the day. Uh, off the ball movement, chasing those loose balls. Yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely brilliant. By the way, KJ, if they don't, don't unstar any, because I'm saving some for later, my bro. Just star the ones up. And I'll, if I'll unstar them when I'm done with them, because there was a United one I wanted to bring up, and it's, I think it's gone now. Sorry. Uh, Trossard is cooking. Jesus is back. No injuries is what David says here. Absolutely. Jesus, amazing flick to set up his chance only to hit it straight at the keeper. My number nine is back. The injuries clearing up when we need them. They are. And he's going to be fresh for the rest of the season as well. It's a massive, massive benefit. 